This is IB Physics SL. I am Mr. King. Topic 2 Mechanics. Section 2.1 Motion. Part 2 Two Dimensional Motion. Though there is more than one type of two dimensional motion, we will be focusing on projectile motion. Take a look at the motion of this tennis ball. Perhaps it was hit off the ground, it rose up into the air, and fell back down while moving forward. What would this motion look like if we viewed it from the left hand side? I think it would look a little something like this. Besides the fact that the tennis ball ends up looking a little bit smaller because we know it's far away, we really only saw it rise and fall. There was no horizontal motion involved. The physics for this part of the motion is exactly the same as for a ball thrown directly upward. The acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, and the velocity at the top is 0 meters per second. Let's take a look at that motion again. What would it look like if we viewed it from above? Perhaps something like this. Once again, besides the fact that the tennis ball looked a little bit bigger as it rose up toward us, it really just moved at a constant speed in a straight line toward the right. This is exactly the same physics as a ball rolling along the floor at a constant velocity, in which case acceleration would be zero. Let's put all those views together. An important thing to note is that whichever way we look at it, the flight of the ball took three seconds. If we examine just the vertical motion, it took three seconds to rise and fall. If we look at just the horizontal motion, it traveled to the right at a constant velocity for three seconds. Time is what connects the vertical motion and the horizontal motion. Now let's take a look at the path of a projectile as well as its velocity vectors and acceleration vector. We describe the path of a projectile as parabolic, which means in the shape of a parabola. Let's see what happens to the velocity vectors of a projectile as it travels along its path. We'll start with the vertical velocity. Right when a projectile is launched or kicked or thrown, it has its greatest upward velocity. As it rises, because of the effect of gravity, the magnitude of its vertical velocity decreases. When it gets to the highest point, where it is no longer rising and not yet falling, its vertical velocity is zero. As it falls under the influence of that same gravitational force, the vertical velocity increases in the downward direction. The gravitational force is responsible for slowing this projectile as it rises and accelerating it toward the ground as it falls. But as long as we're only looking at situations where air resistance is negligible, then horizontally the velocity of the projectile doesn't change. However much horizontal velocity it begins with, it carries with it the entire way through. Even at the highest point, where there's no vertical velocity because it's no longer rising but not yet falling, it is still moving forward. It still has however much horizontal velocity it started with. Here you can see the vertical and horizontal velocities combined. As we've already said, the vertical motion of a projectile is the result of the effect of gravity. And as we've learned, gravity causes objects in free fall to accelerate at 9.81 meters per second squared downward. This acceleration is a constant value. As it rises, it loses 9.81 meters per second of velocity every second. And as it falls, it gains 9.81 meters per second of velocity every second. Even at the highest point where the vertical velocity is zero, it's still under the influence of that same force of gravity. Most of the calculations we'll do for projectile motion will be using the kinematics equations that we already know. In addition to these, we'll have to use some basic trigonometry to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity. The horizontal component of the initial velocity is the velocity times the cosine of the angle. The vertical component of the initial velocity is the velocity times the sine of the angle. If our initial velocity is 23 meters per second, 
and our angle is 41 degrees, then the horizontal component of that initial velocity will be 17 meters per second, and the vertical component of the initial velocity will be 15 meters per second. Let's find out the maximum height that the ball reaches. We'll start with the givens, as usual. The initial vertical velocity was 15 meters per second. The final velocity, that is, the velocity at the highest point, is 0 meters per second. And of course, the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Our unknown is the displacement. The appropriate equation for these givens and that unknown is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We can substitute in our given values and find that the maximum height the ball reaches is 11 meters. Now let's figure out how long the ball is in the air. Again, we know that the initial vertical velocity is 15 meters per second. But this time, since we care about the entire flight of the ball, we can say that the final velocity is negative 15 meters per second. Once again, the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And our unknown in this case is going to be t. Based on those variables, we can select the equation v equals u plus at. We can substitute in our known values and then solve, finding that the time is 3 seconds. Finally, for this problem, let's determine the horizontal displacement, otherwise known as range, of the ball. We know that horizontally it was moving 17 meters per second. Horizontally, it doesn't accelerate. There's nothing to make it go faster or slower horizontally. And we know from the vertical motion of the ball that it travels for a time of 3 seconds. Displacement is our unknown, which means that one equation we could use is s equals ut plus 1 half at squared. When we substitute in our known values, we'll find that the horizontal displacement or range of the ball is 51 meters. In some other projectile problems, a projectile is launched horizontally from some height. The solution for this type of problem is basically the same as before, but it's actually kind of easier because you don't need to do any trigonometry. We'll start by finding the time to the ground using the displacement formula. It's important to note that since this projectile was launched horizontally, the initial vertical velocity is 0 meters per second. We'll find that this projectile took 1.6 seconds to reach the ground. While it was falling for 1.6 seconds, it was also moving forward at a rate of 15 meters per second. With this information, we could figure out how much horizontal displacement or range the projectile will have. Remember, horizontally there is no acceleration. There's nothing pushing the projectile forward to make it go faster, or pushing the projectile backwards to make it go slower. In this case, the projectile traveled forward 24 meters while it was falling 12 meters in 1.6 seconds. Here's a projectile motion example for you. During a football kickoff, the ball is kicked at an angle of 24 degrees at a speed of 28 meters per second. First, calculate how long the ball is in the air. You should find a time of 2.2 seconds. Next, how high does the ball go? You should calculate a vertical displacement of 6.2 meters. Finally, how far away does the ball land? You should calculate a horizontal displacement or range of 56 meters. Let's do one more. A stunt car is driven horizontally off a 35 meter cliff at a speed of 42 meters per second. First, how long does it take the car to strike the ground? You should calculate a time of 2.7 seconds. Next, how far from the base of the cliff does the car land? You should calculate a horizontal displacement of 95 meters. That's it for now. See you next time.